In this part, we are going to talk about how to connect different lines of code. And let me explain the problem. Let's say we have some kind of math operation and we want to print the result of that math operation on the next line. The issue we have now is how can we connect these two lines? And the answer here is we are going to need variables. And variables are an incredibly important topic in any programming language. So let's talk about it. All that variables essentially are is a simple container for any kind of data. We could, for example, put a word, a number, or really anything we have in Python in there. And once you have created this container, you can reuse it over and over again. And this variable you create like this. We have the variable name, then we have the assign operator, and that is just an equal sign. And then we have the actual data or the value we want to assign. And that is basically it. This instead of a word could also be a number like one and it could be anything else. But how you would solve the earlier problem is you would first store the math operation result in a variable called result. And then this result you would print on the next line. And I suppose let's actually try all of this. Once more, completely empty Python file. And in here, I want to do a math operation again. And so far, we always used print and then did some math in here. Let's say 10 plus five. But this print we don't need. We could just have lines like this. Although if I execute the code now, again, by pressing control B, nothing would happen. Although something did happen, Python did calculate the result here. We just didn't tell to print the result, so it doesn't print the result and we can't see anything. But something did indeed happen. Instead of printing this result, I want to store it in the variable. And this variable I called result. And this is going to be the name of my variable now. And now to assign this value here to this result, we are going to need the equal sign which is telling Python that the result of this operation should be assigned to this variable. And now on the next line, we can just print that result. And if I run the code now, we are getting 15 or the result of this operation here. And what is even better? We could use this result for further operations and we would use it like the actual value. For example, what I could be doing, I could have another variable, let's call it result two. And the value here should be the original result divided by two. And if I now print result two, we can see we get 15 and 7.5, which is this result divided by two. And this we could do forever. This result is basically a stand in for the value we have created here. Although there's one thing you do want to be careful about, and that is variable naming. Let's talk about this one really quick. There are two variable naming parts. The first one is the mandatory parts that you have to follow. If you do not follow these naming conventions, Python is going to throw an error. And fortunately, they are fairly simple. The most important one is that variable names can only contain letters, numbers, and the underscore symbol. You couldn't use something like the dollar sign, percentage, space, something like this. Space in particular should make sense quite intuitively. If there's a space in a variable name, it's really hard for Python to tell if we have one variable or two variables, it just gets messy. And if you have a longer variable name and you want to add multiple words together, you would use an underscore. And that is quite a common thing to do. I will show you in a second. The second rule is a variable name must start with a letter or an underscore. The important thing here is numbers are not allowed. A variable name cannot start with a number. Finally, variable names must be different from the inbuilt Python tools. For example, we couldn't name a variable print. I hope this one makes sense as well. It would just be confusing. And I guess let's have a look at all of these rules and see if we can play around with them. 
I want to create a new variable. Let me call it test. And in here, we can just add a word test. It doesn't really matter. If I run this code now, we are not getting an error because this variable name here is perfectly fine. And I could also add an underscore, add some numbers, add another underscore, and add some capital letters. All of this for Python, totally fine. Although this name here, probably really confusing. What Python doesn't like, let me put this on the next line, is if we, for example, start with a number for the variable. Let's say to test, and the value here could be test again, it doesn't matter. If I run this now, we are getting a syntax error. Oh, well, we are getting quite a bit. Let's actually go through this error message here. First of all, Python is telling me which file has caused the error, and also it's telling me on what line the error occurred. Line eight in this case, which you can see here on the left side. Besides that, I also get the actual line that caused the error. So to test is equal to test. And below that, we have the really important information. And that is this syntax error, invalid decimal literal. It sounds somewhat cryptic, but what Python is complaining about here is that we are starting a variable name with a letter. However, if I change this to to test, everything is working just fine again. And on top of that, adding a number anywhere else inside of the variable name is perfectly fine. I could, for example, add the two at the end. This would also work just fine. The other thing that you are really not allowed to do is to add spaces in your variable name. And if I run this one now, we are getting invalid syntax again. And here, Python is giving me a ton more information although it really doesn't tell me all that much. This line here is the really important one. And I think it does make sense why there's no space allowed. If we have something like this, it looks like we have two separate variables, which obviously would be kind of confusing. So what programmers I usually do in basically any programming language is they always add underscore signs to show that we want to add a space. But with that, we have all of the basics for variable naming, or at the very least, the mandatory parts. There are some more that are more optional. Let's talk about those. The most common rule that you are going to see is that you should use snake case. And snake case just means that when you are starting a new word, you always start with lowercase, and every additional word always is lowercase. You basically only use lowercase letters. And then to connect words, you're using the underscore. And this one you have to use anyway, since this is a Python rule. What snake case basically means is you are always going to use lowercase letters and space is replaced with an underscore. That's all it means. Besides that, the other rule is that variable names should make sense. This sounds very obvious, but I can show you a couple of examples in just a second that might get very confusing. Generally, it's fine to have longer variable names, but make sure that the variable name expresses its content. It's very easy to not do that and end up with code that you do not understand anymore. So always write long names that express what the variable actually does. And finally, variable names should be consistent. I suppose this one is pretty obvious. And I guess the really important one is this one here, because this one is looking terrible. If you were working with other people and try to name a variable like this, you would have some questions about your mental wellness, I suppose. Something better would be more like test variable, and let's call it practice. This one here would be a perfectly fine variable name. It is in the snake case, because we have lowercase letters and we are connecting the words with an underscore. And this one here would also be at least a valid Python name, but we are kind of inconsistent. We are first writing a word with letters and then the actual number. So what you might want to do here is write two a bit more consistently or don't use any numbers when variable names begin and always stick with numbers. 
Whatever you prefer, just be consistent, it really helps. The final thing I really want to mention, what I see a lot of beginners do, is do something like x equals, I don't know, some words. And this is fine for shorter programs, but once you have longer ones, it can be really confusing. Meaning you want to replace this with something that actually means something. It is a really common thing that you write a program, you don't look at the program for half a year, then you come back to the program and you have no idea what you did half a year ago. Happens to literally every programmer. And naming your variables properly makes it a lot easier to read what your code actually does. So name your variables properly. There's one more thing that I really want to do because now that we have variables, we get a few more math operations. Although those math operations are going to look a bit weird. They are looking like this. We have plus equal, minus equal, divide equal, and multiply equal. I think to explain what they do, let's do an example. Let's say I have num1 is equal to 1, a really basic variable. And I want to increase the value of this num by a certain amount. For example, let's say by 5. To do that, I could write some code like this, that num1 is itself plus 5. And this would be fine, but this also feels kind of clumsy. And for that, we have these operators here. What you would do instead in Python is something like this. We have num itself, then plus equal 5. And those two code snippets here do exactly the same thing. They take the original variable and then add a certain value to it. Let's do this in code, actually. I think that's going to make more sense. I want to create another variable. Let me call it num1. And by default, this one is 10. And now this 10, I want to increase by 5 again. And this could look like this. I want to get my original num1 and then add 5 to it. If I now print num1, we are getting the value all the way at the end, which is 15 again. I guess let me use different numbers so we get some different results. Now we get 20, which is 10, the value of num1 plus 10. But again, this here is kind of clumsy. And Python gets around this by adding plus equal, and then we are adding 10. Meaning now we are taking the original value of num1 and adding 10 towards it and assigning all of this again to num1. And if I run this, we are getting the same result. So if I spell this out a bit better, these two lines here are doing the exact same thing. And this is working with the other math operators as well. For example, we could have minus equal and we are getting zero. We could add multiply equal, which is getting us 100. And we have divide equal, which is getting us one. And if you just want to update a variable, this is how you would do it. And this is now bringing us to the exercise for this part. And what I want you guys to do is to create a variable that has some kind of snake case and try to use a bit of a longer word. Assign a value to it. And on the next line, increase this value by 20. And then on the third line, print the variable. Let's get started by creating a really long variable name that is a bit annoying. Obviously, you would never use something like this in practice, but I hope you get the idea. And the value I want to assign is, let's go with 10. On the next line, I want to get my really long variable name that is a bit annoying. And I realized I do have a typo. Let me fix it really quick. And I want to increase this value. So I want plus equal. And I think I said 20. And now finally, I want to print my really long variable name that is a bit annoying. And if I print this, we are getting 30. And with that, we have variables, which is an incredibly important concept. 